at the spot. I apologize for the way my voice sounds. It's the one God gave. No, wait, that's not what I was going to say. Um, I apologize for the way my voice sounds. Uh, it is the one that God gave me this week. Um, I don't know what happened, but we have the plague going through uh, my house right now. And I'm the only one that I'm, I haven't even really survived. Megan, my thing won't connect, so yay. Um, <laughs> that kind of tells you how I feel this morning. So um, apparently, uh, I knew this was going to happen too. It's kind of that, it, it wasn't even that much prophecy. Like last week, right before Christmas, Audra starts getting sick. So she goes to the doctor because she's like, I'm not missing Christmas because I'm sick. She goes and they give her a Z-pack. She's like slam full of antibiotics. And a couple days later, she's starting to, starting to feel better. And she ended up managing through Christmas. She wasn't feeling great, but she was okay. And then a couple days later, Kobe starts acting like he's starting to get sick. And I'm like, oh, great. This is like Tuesday, Wednesday. So we run him to the doctor. They give him a Z-pack. And I'm sitting here going, all right, well, it's either me or Avalon. And I have to preach Sunday, so I guess it's going to be me. And uh, that's what happened. About uh, two days ago, I started feeling pretty awful. And uh, my throat started hurting a little bit. And then uh, yesterday and last night, I was running a fever. So um, my mind's not real clear right now. So I I may have, uh, I may say some things you might want to check the tape on today. Uh, But I'm actually uh, doing good. Lydia, you can come on up here. Um, She's scared. She's not scared. Can you turn uh, Brett's mic on, I think? I'm just going to give uh, Lydia an opportunity. Last week, we had a chance to go. Uh, actually, I'm just going to let her, t- let her tell. Uh, what did we do last week? I'm really bad at telling stories. Okay. Um, we went to Indianola, Iowa, and it was a quite a journey getting up there. It started snowing that night, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we were, we were there. We, we could have stayed there for another week. Um. Well, during service, same same sermon. Thanks for giving away all my secrets, huh? <laughs> um, That's what happens when you give people microphones. Well, we talked about relationships. That hit a couple people. I know that. Um, I don't know. It it's kind of like Tri State. You go there, you connect, you make more friends. I don't know. <laughs> so what? Um, how long was the camp? Oh, it, um, she doesn't remember. It's two, I picked the two wrong and a half days. Two and a half. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Sunday night, Monday, and Tuesday. Yeah. So we, um, what did, um, what was one thing that happened up there that was new, different, something you've never done before? We played nine square best game in the world. <laughs> By the way, like Braxton was dominating. He cheated. He's too tall. He was cheating. Um, so what did you take away from camp? Um, to let God control, or I don't know, uh, how do I put this? To give him all my thoughts about relationships, because if it's in my control, it's going to be everywhere with me. (laughs) So there we go. Thank you. Thank you, Lydia. Don't trip. I, I really just like to make the students really nervous. And that, that's, uh, I, I kept asking them, like, is Lydia going to be here? And everybody's like, why? And uh, it's like, just, just wondering. Uh, I targeted you. Actually, I, I targeted you because I targeted you because some of the counselors up there said that you had a lot of really good things to say. So I thought maybe she's got something good to say. So. Wait, what's the Bible say? Be ready in season. Okay, gotcha. Um, so here's uh, that basically that's we, last week, last Sunday, we took off and we headed north in the church bus. I think everybody thought maybe the church might the church bus might not make it um, because they thought it might break down. Uh, I know Brad was patiently waiting as we pulled out of the driveway. I guess he figured as long as we got over the hill, we weren't on him anymore. So um, he waited until that we got over the hill. And that was really one of our big concerns because we just had some issues with it. Had a, a belt that kind of fried on it. And we thought, well, we're going to get halfway up there and something may, may go bad. And we may be making some phone calls to see if somebody can come help us. But um, then we got up there and of course it snowed. And we were like up in the middle of the corn fields in Iowa. There was nothing else. And uh, 
there was a couple pretty good hills we had to get up and down to get in and out. And as the snow started piling up, we thought this might be a longer trip than what we anticipated. But um, Audra backed up and mashed, mashed the throttle down and we kind of bounced our way up the hill. And once we got over the hill, we were good to go. So uh, it all worked out really well. I know there was a few people praying for us because they thought we might not make it and we might have to hike somewhere, but it was, it was a pretty good time. Um, I think we took 14 students up, so we had, we had a pretty good group of people up there. Uh, and then Cody, uh, Matheny, he helped me, and, uh, and then me and Audra. So we had a good time, though. Um, and as Lydia spilled my secret, um, Sunday night, I, I actually, I preached at the camp. That's the other, the other thing. I was the speaker. Um, so Sunday night, I, uh, I had uh, been preparing this message for something else, and Ryan, the guy who's the director of that camp up there, he had been asking me, like, he doesn't really understand how I work. Like, two months out, he's asking me, hey, what are you preaching on? I'm like, when? And he's like, for camp. I'm like, oh, that's like two months away, dude. You got, you got, I got plenty of time. And, and I ended up, the last week before camp, I ended up changing what I was preaching anyway, which was, I'm sure he thought was awesome, because I had already sent him all my sermon notes, and he had prepared questions, and done everything for all the small groups. And then like three days before I'd like, Hey, I'm not doing any of that. So he probably won't ever have me come back, but, um, but no, we're, we're good friends. But, uh, this Sunday night sermon, I I preached, it was called, what do you believe? And that was really what I wanted to try and get that question embedded in everyone's mind is what do you believe? Um, now for some of you, you know who I am and you know, uh, you know, some things about me and some of you don't. But basically, in a nutshell, I'm a preacher. I, I preach uh, here. I'm a youth pastor. I've been a youth pastor for, oh, I'm going to share my age, uh, like 16 going on 17 years. So I know I only look like I'm 22, but, you know, I've been doing this for a while. Um, I, I've, I've been around youth. I've been around youth and student ministries my whole life. Uh, that's one of the big, one of the big things about who I am. Um, and one of the, you know, one of the things I work at Ford Motor Company, I'll just get that out here because there's a question later that's going to, you're going to understand my bias, but uh, I work at Ford Motor Company. I enjoy anything that goes fast and might kill me. I like things that make loud noises and go bang. And, um, you know, there's, that, that's, I also like the loud noises goes for that and, you know, rock and roll music and firearms that's, you know, that encompasses all, but you know, that. That's kind of some of the things that I do. That's some of the things that I enjoy. Uh, I have a great family. Uh, most of them are all sick right now, apparently. But I have a great family. Um, who we've been blessed with, you know, for, for the most part, good health. And, you know, we enjoy, we've enjoy. we enjoyed the Christmas and, uh, and some of the New Year. And um, that's kind of a little bit about who I am. So now that you know a little bit about me, I'm going to ask you some questions. I would like for you to raise your hand, yes or no. You know, uh, I always tell everybody I'm a little more teacher than I am preacher. That's because I've been doing that for a lot, a lot longer. So uh, I, I like to get you guys involved in what I'm doing from time to time. So uh, I'm going to ask you guys a few questions. These are really simple. You're either going to be on one side of this fence or the other, and, and then there's going to be this small section that's like, I don't really care. Um, and and for, for most of these really, really important questions, that's just unacceptable. Um, so the first question is, do you... The first question is going to be, do you like Ford or Chevy? Raise your hand for Ford. Yeah, we got a lot. You never know how that's just going to go. All right, now raise your hand if you like Chevy. All right, well, we're going to pray for you. Um, the, uh, see, the lights go out. I don't know what happened. The light guy is a Chevy guy, so he turned the lights out on me. That's why that happened. Um, so... We have, we have Ford or Chevy. Obviously, we have good and evil, um, you know, right and wrong. We have, all, we have all that covered. The next one, this movie just came out a couple weeks ago. Maybe you guys have, uh, uh, have already seen it. I won't give any spoilers if you haven't. But how about Jedi and Sith? Who's Jedi? It's remarkable how many people go the other way. It's kind of odd. But uh, Jedi, we got a few Jedi. How about Sith? There's three. How many of you don't know what a Sith is? How? All right. Later, there will be a marathon running in this church, episodes 
one through six, starting with four and then going four, five, six, back to one, two, three. And then we will all load up on the church bus and we will go watch seven. Um, So for those of you who don't know what we're talking about, Darth Vader, anybody know who Darth Vader is? He was Sith. Okay, so um, gee whiz, this is... You know, we talk about in our leadership meetings sometimes about how we need to educate our people more. And this is just a good example of what, of what needs to happen. No, I'll, okay, I'll move on. So Jedi Sith wasn't a big hit. There's like four people that know what that is. How about this one? Chiefs or Broncos? Chiefs. All right, where's Brett? <laughs> he's, he's probably out there getting coffee. He's like, whatever. I don't want to listen to that guy. How about Broncos? I know Travis Viverka, there's like four of you. Ah. All right. Now we're getting into the really important ones. How about Royal? Hi, Brett. How you doing? <laughs> you heard something. Somebody's talking about you, huh? Uh, how about Royals? Go Royals. And hey, here's what, here's what I want to I wanna clarify. I don't care if you just jumped on the bandwagon last year. It doesn't matter. We've stunk and there's been so much room on the bandwagon for my whole life. I don't care who joins as long as there's 800,000 people enjoying it. Um, Now for the other side, I know there's a couple here. Like I said, good and evil, right and wrong. Royals or Cardinals? How, How about Cardinals? She's not in here right now. Where's she at? Yes, she's in children's ministry. See, if we don't like the team you like, we send you out of here and make you watch the kids. So um, that's what happens. Brett, where you at? And they've already been children's ministry directors. So yeah, whatever. I I don't, Charlie Brown's parents right there. That's all I hear. So Royals, Cardinals. Um, Now here's what I want you guys to think about. What is the reason behind what you chose? You know, those are, those are all kind of silly. Like, you know, everybody has, that's the water cooler opinion. Everybody kind of has, has an opinion about one, one of those maybe. Um, what is the reason behind your belief in what side you chose? Winners? The home team? But have you really, like, like Ford and Chevy, you know, or, you know, maybe... Royals Cardinals, maybe you grew up in a, in a home that was divided between the, the royal blue and the ugly red. Um, the, a lot of times what we believe comes from our mentors around us, comes from uh, probably primarily our parents, maybe a teacher, uh, maybe a pastor, youth leader. Our, our beliefs sometimes are learned through our experiences, You know, personal experiences. Some of you jumped off the Royals bandwagon because your experience wasn't very good. So you're like, I have to find a team that I can watch. Um, You know, I know a lot of friends who started rooting for Detroit and Minnesota because the Royals were just awful. But their personal experience, sometimes that dictates our beliefs. That that helps to influence our beliefs. And sometimes we just take our beliefs are formed just because we're just going to go with the flow. Maybe all those things that I read off that list, maybe none of those were that big, that critical to you. Maybe you're like, yeah, I don't, well, obviously you don't know who the Sith are, but you know, maybe you're like Ford, Chevy, I don't care as long as it starts in the morning when I get in it and it gets me to work. You know, that might be what team you're on. Um, the, you know, Chiefs, Broncos, Royals, Cardinals, you know, I could list off a whole bunch of things. Maybe that's not that important. Maybe you just go with the flow with that belief. So now I want you to think about what are some things that you believe in? Some things that you believe, like some things that are like core values to you. Some things that you are really, um, you're really passionate about. And then I want to answer this question. What are beliefs? Like, because we can say, you know, I believe this, I believe this. But what are beliefs? What are beliefs? Or uh, if you want to take it a, a step further, Your faith, you know, people talk about what is your faith or, you know, that thing. What are your beliefs or your faith? And up on the screen, we're going to, we're going to put my definition. This first one is kind of like my interpretation or my understanding of this, of this word belief. But my beliefs are what I am made up of and what makes my ideals. You know, the things that I believe shape kind of the way that I act. 
You know, if, if I'm a Royals fan or a Ford fan or, or, or whatever, there, there's going to be actions that I take. I may go to a game. I may buy a certain vehicle. You know, they're the things that filter my reactions, my responses, and my plans. You know, my, the things that I believe determine sometimes how I react in certain situations. And simply put, my beliefs guide, or our beliefs guide our actions. Our beliefs guide our actions. And when I look this up, that's actually, the last one's actually more of the, the definition, the, the Wikipedia, or not the Wikipedia, the, the Webster definition of beliefs. And, and you know, it, it's kind of funny. It, 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 your beliefs could be good or bad, right or wrong, or whatever. But your beliefs guide your actions. That's kind of the idea. Beliefs are, are kind of strange. Sometimes we don't even think about our beliefs. We just accept them when someone tells us something, you know, we, we may not, we may grow up in a house and you're, maybe you maybe your parents were like, no, we buy Fords because that's what we do. And that's just the way that you grew up and that's what you accepted and that's what you did. And sometimes it, it, our beliefs are, are kind of strange. We just believe whatever someone tells us. But for us Christians, it's a little different. We have a book that tells us what we should believe about everything. Like there's a, uh, there, there, Literally, any question, situation, thing, circumstance, whatever could come up in your mind, there is scripture to instruct you on how to respond, react, and plan for those situations. We have a book that gives us direction and guidance on everything. And it all starts with our beliefs, with what we believe. So, so for a Christian, what do we believe? You know, if you're going to be a if you're going to be a follower of Christ, you're going to be someone who claims to be a Christian. You know, and you you are brave enough to raise your hand and say, "Yes, I'm a Christian." What does that mean? What do you believe? First John five five. Let's put that up on the screen. It says, "Who is it that overcomes the world except the one who believes that what?" that Jesus is the son of God. This is kind of like that first step to your Christian beliefs. This is like the first question you have to answer. What is it that you believe? It all starts here. Uh, there's a, there's a, a philosopher, Soren Kierkegaard. He, uh, I've used this quote before, but um, he says that that's the first question that everyone should answer is who is Jesus? Like either you're, either you're gonna accept him as Lord and the son of God, or you're not. You're either going to say he was the Messiah or he was a man who was a good teacher, had a big following and, and said some good things. And, and that's, that's the question that you leave. If, as a Christian, that's where it starts. That's the, the foundation, the building block of your faith, of your beliefs. Who is Jesus Every single one of us needs to answer that question. Who is Jesus? And then we need to look at that little word that we've been talking about all morning. What does it mean to believe or believe in something? What does it mean? All right, I asked four guys. I may have asked five or six. Like I said, the, pain, the medicine might be messing with my head. But I asked four guys, come, up, come on up, uh, Justin, Ross, Cody and Eric. All right, Justin, quit talking to your dad. Come on. Sitting in the back of class talking already, just like normal. Um, all right, I got these four guys. I'm going to have you guys right down here, down front. They know what they're doing. The next person that I call has no clue. So this is going to be fun. Um, so I, I have four big guys, intimidating, scary looking, bearded guys. So that's even better. Some of you are like, no, nah, it doesn't matter. Um, I'm going to ask, man, I really want to do one of the elders because this would, this would be like, hey, Jonah. Let's, uh, you guys got this? All right, come on. They believe. We're going to find out if you believe. Jonah is scared. I'm kind of scared because I, I, this, is, this has not been rehearsed. Jonah doesn't know what he's doing. I need you to come up here with me. For those of you who don't know, this is Jonah Albertson. He is uh, one of our elders here at the church. He, uh, 
Are you scared of heights? No. Are you scared of these guys? Okay. <laughs> Confidence. All right. This is something you guys have all seen before. Um, it, it's a trust fall. You guys have all seen this before. So what, what, does, what does belief mean? Does anybody know what belief means? If I ask you what the definition of believe is, what is it? Trust. Somebody said trust. To place your life in trust. It's a financial term. It literally means to put it on the line. So at this point, I have asked Jonah, and he's figured it out, and most of you guys, well, all you guys have figured it out too. What? Sure. That's why I picked an elder. Um, so here's the question. I just asked Jonah. They're, they're strategizing. This is scaring me. This is starting to scare me. They're like, Ross is in charge, and they're strategizing. <laughs> I need to rethink what I'm doing here. Um, so I've just asked Jonah, if he trusts these guys, do you believe these guys? You believe in these guys? Yeah. yeah. He said, yeah. So here's the, here's the thing. Does he? Has he? No. According to the definition, nothing about what he thinks has changed his action yet. Yet. You might want to catch him up high, just a little tip. That way you got to brace a little bit. So, but um, nothing, about what he's, nothing about what he's said or done has proven his belief yet, right? All right, so now we got to do the deal. I've stalled long enough. All right, so all I need you to do, stand up here, and you're just going to have to trust him. It's a long ways down, just FYI. Not to make you. So, all right, let's see if these guys, hey. Hey, try not to drop him. It'll make my, it'll make my uh, demonstration really bad if he doesn't. I, Ross, Ross is in charge. He's not looking, so here we go. Let's see what happens. All right. Now, you guys can go be seated. Thank you, guys. Jonah's like... <laughs> so, give a round of applause for those guys one more time. So, all right, understand everybody's seen one of those. Maybe some of you have even done one of those. It's a really simple uh, team building strategy that people use to get you to think different. And that's what I want you to do. Every time you see that from now on, I want you to think of believe. At what point is there belief? And to Jonah's credit, he, I mean, he kind of waffled around a little bit, but when it was time to fall. He never looked back. He said, you guys ready? Yep. Okay, here we go. And he went and he didn't hesitate. That was belief. That was the definition lived out. Your belief should have an impact on your actions. Have you ever thought about what beliefs you actually have that have changed the way you live? Have you thought about that? What, what do I believe that actually has changed something about me? You know, and, and, and you know, the, the simple ones that we talked about at the beginning are fine, but I'm, let's dig a little deeper. What are some of the core values that you have? Some of the things that you have invested in and believed in and, and researched, studied, and this is like part of your makeup. What are some things that you have believed in that have changed the way you live? If your actions don't change, how do people know if what you believe is any different? How do they know there's been any change? How do they know there's that, that you know, you're really sincere about what you believe? We have a saying here at this church, and it's up on the screen. If there is no change, there is no change. Really simple. I don't think my dad was smart enough to come up with that, but he may have. Um, but if there's no change, there's no change. So in other words... It's like what, what Paul's saying here in Philippians 2.12, therefore my beloved, and it's up on the screen. Sorry, Megan, didn't give you a cue. If it's up on the screen. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, so now not only as in my presence, but much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Work out your own salvation. See, the, there, there is 
There is evidence, there is a process, there are things that are going to change about you because of your salvation. Now, just so everybody's clear and everybody doesn't jump off the theological, you know, deep end, works are evidence of your faith. Say that one more time so everybody gets it. Works are evidence of your faith. Works don't get you saved. They're just evidence of your belief. The same guy, Paul, the same guy that said in Philippians 2.12 to work out your salvation in Rome or in Ephesians 2.8.9, it's up on the screen. For by grace you have been saved through faith and it's not of your own doing. It's the gift of God, not a result of works so that no one may, may boast. Same guy said both things. So what is he saying when he's saying work out your salvation? When you look at that word and you do a word study on it and you start to figure out what he was meaning behind that work, it actually means that you're changing something, that you're pursuing, you're, you're being curious. It's the, it, in, in today's culture, it would be the Google search. You know, there's something that you believe. Now I wanna, I wanna, I, I wanna you know, maybe it's, some of your beliefs are challenged. You wanna investigate, you wanna look in. What does God's word say about this? What does a wise counsel say about this? You know, is, is there somebody who maybe uh, has been through this before that's got experience? What do they say about this? It's working out your salvation because something that you thought was challenged and now you're being forced to question that, to research that, to study that, to find the truth about what you believe and then take that next step of falling and and change happening. Clearly, we don't earn our salvation. It's a gift from God, but there's also clear evidence in scripture or clear evidence of a Christian's beliefs. There should be evidence. Now, Jesus said it would be, there would be fruit, that believers would produce fruit. And he goes on and lists lists some of those things. So how many of us Enjoy this last week, and we made a New Year's resolution. Maybe, maybe you made a resolution, you know, way back that had something to do with self-improvement. Like, you guys all know what I'm getting at here. Losing weight, or studying the Bible more, or, you know, praying in the mornings, or not being late for work, or I, I don't know. But there was, there was something that you made a resolution, you said, I'm going to change. I'm going to do something different. Anybody? Yes? No? It's hot in here and we're all falling asleep. Um, Probably all of us at some point have made one of those resolutions. We've at least contemplated the thought in our mind. Maybe we didn't say it out loud because we didn't want anybody holding us accountable. But we've all at least probably thought that in our minds that, hey, I would, you know, I'd like to lose some weight. Or I'd like to maybe get healthy enough that I could run a 5K or I'd like to be one of those people that could wake up in the morning and, you know, read their Bible and pray. Um, God help you, because I can't do that. But I, maybe those are some of the things that, that you've thought about. But how many of you did something about it? It's staggering the amount of times that we fail of, do, of doing New Year's resolutions or just personal resolutions of uh, something that you're going to change. It's, it's staggering. And, and a lot of us don't even do resolutions anymore, not because we're too old or we outgrew it. It's because we've failed so many times we don't want to try anymore. I mean, if it happens, cool. I'm all on board. If I magically lose 10 pounds, woohoo, we're going to party. But that, it, that failure has kind of beat us down a little bit. question is, to get back on on topic, we can all make resolutions and we can all claim to want to change and want to do things, but at what point was the belief for real? It wasn't real until there was actual change, until there was evidence of change. You know, that person, hey man, not just joining a a gym membership, because apparently that doesn't work, because by February you're all canceling them, but you know, actually going, setting up a routine, finding somebody to hold you accountable to whatever, you know, and when that person actually makes changes and that, that's where their belief is put into action. And the ones that made change prove it with their actions. We've all known somebody who's succeeded 
in a resolution, right? Maybe, hopefully. Um, we, we all know people who've done that. And most of the time, it's because what they believed became so important to them that that dictated their actions and their belief. See, they actually put their beliefs into action and they bought in and fully surrendered to whatever that re- uh, resolution was. Your beliefs should have an impact on what, on what you do. You know, earlier, some of you told me that you believe that Fords are better than Chevys. A lot of you said that, actually. So I would guess that I could probably go and I could, if you gave me full access to your, um, your house or, or, or your property or whatever, I bet I could find some evidence of what you told me that you believe Ford being better, I bet I bet I could find some evidence of that being true. You know, it's pretty pretty simple. You know, you said Fords are better. I probably could go and find a Ford on your property. Maybe there's some clothing in your closet that, you know, Ford or Ford had or, or something. But there's probably evidence of that there, right? And I would guess that almost every one of you, I could find some evidence to hold to your belief. So here's the big idea. For those of you who say you're Christians and you believe that Jesus is the son of God, do your actions prove your beliefs? Do your actions prove your beliefs? It's really simple when we're talking about cars. Like, oh yeah, I believe Ford's better than Chevy. Oh yeah, we can, I can see what you drove up in today. You know, that, that's, that's easy. But what about, what about your belief, your faith? Remember, Christ said to believe that Jesus is the Son of God. To believe that Jesus is the Son of God, that means I have to put myself on the line. I have to put my action, there has to be action to my belief. I have to place my life in trust to that fact that Jesus was the Son of God, that he was the Messiah, he was the Savior. Is there evidence And I'll I'll uh, I'll just go ahead and let's go ahead and squelch this now. Your church attendance record is not very good evidence. It's just not because you can you can come to church for many different reasons, and, and we know this. There's there's several different reasons people come to church. Some of it is they like the people. I don't know why, but sometimes it's just you got some friends or family or somebody around that you just you enjoy coming to a church service together. Sometimes that's what it is. Uh, we tell a lot of times for the younger ones, it's because their parents make them. Like that's why they, that's why they come to church. Has nothing to do with their beliefs, their core values, what, they, what makes them up. It's just the fact that my parents will kill me if I don't get out of bed on Sunday morning and come to church. I mean, I was, that was me sometimes. Like not a big morning pan, or morning person. I wish church could start at like 5 p.m. But um, I, it just, that's, that's one of the reasons why people come to church. You know, other things, it makes you feel good. It, you, you come to church, it, 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 you, get that, you get that pat on the back that, hey, you know, I'm doing something right. Or I'm accomplishing something or I'm doing something well. The evidence of your faith doesn't come in your church attendance record. The evidence of your faith comes in what life change happens within you. Now, yeah, church evidence, you might, or church attendance, you might be able to mark that off one of the lists as, oh, okay, maybe they're a Christian or they believe that Jesus is God. But as far as priorities go, that's probably going to be way down on the list. You know, that, there's a lot of things that Jesus said in the Bible that believers are to be doing that would come way ahead of attending your local church. Now, like I said, that's part of it. Hopefully, you're finding some good teaching. Hopefully, you're finding some good people. Hopefully, those are some of the functions that the church is providing for you. But at some point, your faith has to be your own. And that's one of the things that, for me, scares me about student ministry. Because I know that at some point, they're all going to graduate high school and I'm not going to get to be around them every week and they're not going to get to be around each other every week. 
They're not going to be as close. They're going to do what we all call growing up. And we grow up and we spread out. We get busy. We, we start our own families. We start our own careers. We do all this stuff. And, and what happens is if, if their beliefs weren't grounded, and, and, and more importantly, if their beliefs were not their own, then when they get out on their own, it's kind of like letting a balloon go that's full of helium. You just kind of let go and hope it ends up where it's supposed to go. But most of the time it doesn't. See, the, the key for what I'm, I try to do as a teacher is to make sure they understand what they know. You know, they can list off the, you know, some of the Bible, hopefully their Bible knowledge is going up and they, they're learning what the Bible says and do this, don't do this and, um, you know, treat people this way and this is how we demonstrate love. This is how we demonstrate compassion. Hopefully those are things that they, they are learning. They're learning what we do. But most importantly, I want them to know why we do it. Because when you start to ask those why questions about uh, what you believe, then you start to really know who the person of God is and not just the what or the, the, the image or you know, the, that figure of a king sitting on a throne. But when you start to ask the why questions of why do I believe what I believe, you start to learn that, well, okay, we, we do this and we do this because Jesus said that we're to be sacrificial. And, you know, we, we do this because God wants us to be sacrificial. We do this, you know, the why behind that is because God was the ultimate sacrifice. He was the one who laid his life down. So the reason why we do this is because he did that. The, see, what I, I don't want to happen is for everybody to know the what they believe and not know the why they believe. And as Lydia said earlier, I, I preached this message at winter retreat at the youth camp last week. But this message is just as true f- for us as it is for them. We really need to know what our beliefs are. And at some point, those beliefs need to move us to action. We have to be different. You can't believe, you can't have a, a new belief come into your life and then it never change you. Like, and you're the exact same. You know, when you learn something, as you're growing up and you start to learn stuff at a fast rate, it has to change you and shape you. It's no different for us. When God teaches us something and he shows us something or reveals it to us, and we say, man, that's like powerful and that's impactful and that's convicting. But we never move forward and surrender what we want, die to ourselves, and put him ahead, then there's no change. That became, that went from being a belief, a, a core value, an, an, an ideal that we can live by to a really nice concept. And, and what, I, what I'm worried about is that we are living lives where we have a lot of really nice concepts but we don't have anything that we would say is a belief that changes us. You know, we can check all the boxes when somebody says, should we do this? No, we shouldn't do that. Well, when you're in that situation or with that knowledge, how has that changed you? Ask the why questions. We don't live in a time anymore where we just get to sit back and go along for the ride. Some of the some of the things that we talked about earlier, you know, the, the list that we gave Ford, Chevy, you know, Chiefs, Bronco, you, could, you might care less about that. You might just be going along because, you know, your whole family likes Chevy, so you just jump in and go along with that uh, because it really doesn't matter to you and you just want to go with the flow. Unfortunately, that's what a lot of us have been doing with our faith. We just go along for the ride. You know, whatever is, you know, general public is doing, that's what, that's what we'll do. Well, unfortunately, that's not a good direction anymore. It's time that we stand up and work out our faith, and there's no more time to watch. And I'm not talking about a a political uprising. I'm talking about a spiritual awakening. You know, our we know, like somewhere deep down, as believers, we know that 
the political world was never one that Jesus was really into. I mean, one of the reasons he was arrested was because he claimed he was king, going to rebuild the temple, this stuff, and they misunderstood and thought, well, they're going to overthrow the Roman government. They were looking for a king for this earth. He was talking about being king of everything. Now is the time that we need to rise up. Now is the time we need to wake up. And now is the time for our beliefs to show up. Our faith can no longer be a secret. You know, we, we, I talked to our youth group about this. I was like, you know, have you, and I challenged them, have we ever gotten into those situations where you won't really want, like you, you just didn't want to deal with the drama. So you kind of stayed quiet when the religious talk came around. Because you knew, okay, when this stuff comes up, it's going to come out. Oh, there's the church kid. Or there's the, you know, Bible banger or whatever. And you're like, this is just going to cause me drama. And I'm not, I have enough drama. I don't need any more. And I, and I talked with him about that. I was like, you know, don't, I'm, I'm not beating you up. Because I've been in the same boat. You know, I work at an assembly factory and we get like, it's the most diverse place I've ever been. I mean, there's everything in there. Like it, it's just, it's, it's everywhere. And, and so whenever questions come up or situations come up, I always have to answer that question. All right, do I reveal who I am to people? Because they're going to think a certain way about me. But this is not a time to stay in secret. And, and there's a way to approach almost every conversation. Like, I'm not saying that, you know, when some situation comes up, you come flying in with the Bible and slap somebody upside the head and say, hey, that's stupid. The Bible says you should do, that's not what I'm saying. My experience is if you tell them your story and you tell them about you, then the conversations tend to go a little different. You know, when I tell people what God has done for me, then it's a little different than if I just stood up and shook a Bible at him and says, the Bible says you should do this, 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 and this. No, it, it, it is, it's, it's a conversation. It's not a podium. Our faith can no longer be a secret. It's time we wake up. Let's pray. Father, I just want to, uh, I just want to thank you for this, this morning. Father, I just, I thank you for allowing me to come and to share, uh, to share what you've laid on my heart. And Father, I just pray that when we, uh, when we look at this word belief and we start to think about what is it that I actually believe, that we would start to, uh, we would start to actually work out our salvation and our faith and that things would actually start to change that we would take our beliefs from, or t- take these ideals from concept to practice. Father, I just, most of all, I just pray that you would change us. Father, that you would, you would move in and, and convict and reveal things that, that about us that, that need change. And Father, then I, I pray for courage and strength so that we would have the, the, the ability and, and just the courage to, to actually follow through. Father, I pray for wisdom. I pray that as we're studying scripture and we're looking for the truth and we're looking for answers, that you would just reveal it and that we would be wise enough to see it and to implement it. Father, I just, uh, I thank you for this time that we have to come and to, uh, to worship you and to study and look at look at your scripture and see what what direction you're taking us for this new year. Father, I thank you and I love you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I want to leave you with one more thing before we before we roll out of here. The, this was only one of the sermons that I preached. The second one was a little bit different. Um, the second one was the why. And I want you to think about that. Why do you believe what you believe? And this is, we'll call it your homework, because that's what I normally do in youth group. Why do you believe what you believe? 
And here's what, here's what I want you to, you know, to think about this. And I, that's what I tell the teenagers. A lot of times when you start to question beliefs that maybe even your parents have passed down to you, it, it feels a little weird. It feels awkward, like you're questioning authority. Like that's like, it's, you know, it's uncomfortable. And sometimes it can be the same way when we question what God's word and we say, man, truly that's not what he means by this. But let me remind you of something. If God is creator and God has created everything around us, if he's all knowing, if he's all powerful and he's everywhere, there's not a question that we can ask that's going to take him off guard, that's going to surprise him, or that's going to make him ashamed or want to shame us. He can handle tough questions. You know, and what I would challenge you is to actually seek out the why to what you believe. You know, do you believe Jesus is the, the way, the truth, the light, the only way to God? Pursue that. Study that. What does Scripture say? The answers will be, you will find the answers in Scripture. I'm convinced. You know, I know I'm not that old, but I've got some experience with that. You will find the answers. So don't, don't be afraid to question what you believe. Just seek truth. There's, there's a couple rules that I always give the, the students that I teach. One, find it in Scripture. Number two, seek wise counsel. And then number three, you should probably, this should probably be the umbrella that covers it all. Pray about it. Read it in scripture, find it in scripture, seek wise counsel, and pray about it. So don't be afraid to ask the why question. Um, one more thing before we leave. I, uh, I forgot to make this announcement earlier. Like I said, my mind's not working all that great. This concert that we have coming up this Friday, um, it's pretty special to us in the band. And, and this church has always done crazy things to support us. And I'm not asking, like, I, I don't, you know, I'm not asking for, you know, whatever, m- you know, money or whatever. It, it's simply, you know, for, for Justin and for Stevie, you know, Justin's been a part of my life for a long time. You know, I told somebody the other day, I said, honestly, he's really my oldest friend. Like, we've been friends since... I didn't like you for a while, but I mean, we could take, uh, yeah, but 10, but then there's like two or three years in there where I was like, yeah, whatever. Um, but, you know, for a long time, for about 26 years. So, you know, he's, he's, he's one of my oldest friends, if not my oldest friend. And the biggest thing we want, we just want to see some faces, some familiar faces. And I know it's probably not your cup of tea, but you're going to come and you're going to see Justin do something he loves to do. And, you know, that's, that's one of the things that, uh, that, we, that I've enjoyed over the last three or four years of them allowing me to, to join the band is just to be able to do something I like to do with people that I like. Like, that's like one of the greatest things ever is when you finally find a group of people that you want to do something cool with. And uh, we've had some pretty amazing times. I also I am going to need somebody to help. <laughs> um, I need food. Uh, we have three bands Break the Fall included. You can skimp on Break the Fall if you don't like them very much and just feed the other two bands. But uh, the other two bands I need to provide food for. We're going to have a, a little green room area for them to kind of get, you know, get ready, get their clothes changed. We're going to have um, dinner. I would like a real dinner for them. Um, I know a lot of times when they're out on the road, they don't like so much sweets because they get junk food everywhere. They like fruit, uh, fruit salads, fresh food, stuff like that. But also home-cooked meals are great anybody would like to help sponsor that or to sponsor that, um, let me know. Uh, we are, uh, we are trying to get a, some other things together and we're spending money and I feel like maybe that would be something that'd be good to have, ask for help on. So if you want to help, you know, feed the bands, then come see me, uh, for the rest of you enjoy, uh, enjoy your day. I'm going to go home and try to sleep and maybe feel better by Wednesday. I don't know. So thank you guys. Um, I'll see y'all later.